Dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome to this PCR spotlight on how to manage antithrombotic therapy in patients with COVID-19 undergoing interventional procedures. My name is Davide Capodanno. I am an interventional cardiologist working in Catania, Italy. And today I'm pleased to be joined by two authorities in the field of antithrombotic pharmacotherapy, Gilles Montalesco from uh, Paris, France, and uh, Dominic Angelillo from uh, Jacksonville, uh, United States. Welcome, uh, Dominic, and welcome, Gilles. Jill, uh, let me start by asking you the first question. Uh, do you think that uh, COVID-19 is a prothrombotic state per se, or you think differently that uh, there is nothing unusual compared with uh, daily practice? Uh, very, very good question. It, it is a, a prothrombotic state for several reasons. First, uh, it's a disease which is uh, associated with intense inflammation, um, with also endothelial dysfunction, with uh, impaired fibrinolysis, and uh, we, we have a couple of markers which uh, are way up in these patients, like uh, D-dimers and fibrinogen, uh, not to mention platelets with a low platelet count in many patients. So we are in a situation of a prothrombotic state, and it exposes patients to complications such as venous thromboembolism, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, and also sometimes disseminated intravascular coagulation. Thank you, Jill. So it's clear that uh, COVID-19 is a prothrombotic state, uh, and uh, we should be well aware of that when we deal with uh, drugs in ACS or PCI patients. So Dominic, uh, uh, the question is for you now. Are there any special considerations on the use of uh, oral antiplatelets in uh, COVID-19 patients in need? Yeah, absolutely. And, and as uh, Jill uh, already highlighted, we are dealing with uh, uh, a highly thrombotic uh, situation and therefore uh, potent uh, antiplatelets uh, uh, are key, uh, particularly in these patients uh, who may be coming in with an acute coronary syndrome uh, and undergoing PCI. And again, I would like to emphasize there is a clear association between this pro-inflammatory status, uh, the cytokine storm, and plaque rupture, uh, and therefore patients truly coming in uh, with, uh, uh, with an ACS. Uh, which we need to distinguish from the uh, secondary uh, uh, MIs. So uh, in these patients, we're typically relying uh, on the more potent uh, P2I12 inhibitors, which may include uh, Prasigrel uh, or Ticagalor. But what's important, uh, very important to keep in mind is that uh, we're seeing uh, more and more uh, evidence on the uh, uh, value of the antivirals that are being used uh, for the treatment uh, of the uh, COVID-19 itself. And so we must be aware of drug-drug interactions between these antivirals and uh, the P2Y12 inhibitors. Uh, and I think the greatest concern is with uh, Ticagalor uh, because there are antivirals that uh, uh, interfere with CYP3A4 which is a common pathway for uh, uh, Ticagalor. So again, always uh, uh, keep uh, the concomitant medications in mind. Okay, thank you, Dominic, for this uh, very practical advice. Uh, and uh, maybe to complete the spectrum uh, of uh, antithrombotics, I would ask uh, Jill uh, the question on anticoagulants, uh, whether he has uh, some uh, special considerations on their use. On the first point, I, I would say is um, that most of these patients, if not all of these patients, if there is no serious contraindication to anticoagulation, they should receive uh, uh, an anticoagulant treatment because the risk of having uh, a thrombotic complication is pretty high. This is true for the, the, the sickest patient uh, on ventilators. This is true for the patients hospitalized uh, without uh, uh, artificial ventilation. But this is true also for ambulatory patients going back home with this disease, high inflammation, and uh, uh, exposed to uh, pulmonary embolism. And as you may know, we have seen up to 30% of patients with uh, this uh, disease having a pulmonary embolism, symptomatic or asymptomatic. So we need to prevent these thrombotic complications, and we need to use anticoagulants in these patients. Probably the easiest way to do that is to use low molecular weight appliances in these patients. Thank you very much, excellent. And, and Dominic, uh, uh, maybe the last question is about uh, patients we have not uh, uh, spoken too much about, uh, such as those who are uh, stable, or uh, they are just troponin positive uh, or asymptomatic. So there are these uh, 
kind of patients in which maybe you have uh, other advices uh, for managing antiplatelets? Yes, so uh, this is a very dis different situation from the anticoagulants that uh, Gilles very nicely uh, uh, expanded upon. So when it comes to antiplatelets, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a very clear indication for those patients coming in with a true uh, uh, MI. Now, a lot of uh, these uh, COVID-19 patients who are coming in with positive troponins, uh, but these are secondary MIs, and the uh, recommendations are uh, for not uh, treating these patients uh, with uh, antiplatelets. Clearly, in these patients, the anticoagulants have a very important role. So this is one group of patients, but the other very important group of patients are those who have coronary artery disease, uh, have COVID-19, but are asymptomatic. And I do get a lot of questions about, should these patients be switching uh, uh, therapies? And the short answer is, is, is no. Uh, if they're doing fine, uh, they have drugs that are working for them, we should not think about a switching because switching can also lead to potential uh, uh, bleeding uh, uh, complications. Okay, so thank you very much. So if I may summarize uh, key points uh, and uh, key uh, teachings from this discussion, the first one is that COVID-19 is per se a prothrombotic state. We have learned that uh, particularly with antiplatelets, we should be well aware of the drug-to-drug -drug interactions, and uh, uh, particularly with ticagrelor among antiplatelets used in acute coronary syndromes, as Dominica said. And uh, from uh, Gilles, we have learned also that uh, uh, most patients will require anticoagulation, and among the anticoagulants, uh, low molecular weight heparin is probably the drug to, to prefer. And finally, we have also uh, understood that uh, when the COVID-19 patients are asymptomatic, uh, we should uh, refrain from start switching drugs because this may be more dangerous than uh, really beneficial in this uh, in these patients. So I would like to thank uh, Jill and Dominic for uh, their help in uh, a better understanding of this uh, topic, which is very relevant to our practice as uh, interventional cardiologists. And you know that for other practical information, you can refer to other specific videos of this PCR series in the face, Facing COVID-19 with PCR app on PCR Online. Thank you very much for watching this video.